Hello viewers, we are Darunal taking you through the story of a level pure mathematics. And this video we're going to go through the topic of coordinate geometry 1. So this video is suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So before we proceed, let's first look at the course outline. So math paper 1 of pure mathematics is divided into five parts. The first part is algebra where two questions come in section A and two in section B and these are the topics. The second part is trigonometry where one comes in section A and one in section B. These are the topics. The third part is geometry where one comes in section A, one in section B and these are the topics. Then fourth part is vectors where one comes in section A, one in section B and these are the topics. And lastly, calculus, where three come in section A and three in section B. So, so far, the ones which are ticked are available on this platform. So, calculus, the entire calculus is available. Vectors is available. Trigonometry is available. Complex numbers is available. Sorry, the algebra is available. And now we are dealing with geometry. So, in this video, we're going to go through the topic of coordinate geometry 1. So you yeah, start with the general Cartesian equation of a straight line. So this is similar to the one you did in all level equation of a straight line. But you shall repeat it since it's on syllabus. So suppose the point P, which is XY, is a point on the straight line which cuts the y-axis at point OC and has a gradient M. So let's first illustrate that with the aid of a diagram. So we have the axis, then we shall have the line, straight line, which passes through the point A, which is 0C, and point P, which is XY. And this line has a gradient M. Therefore, the gradient is the same as the slope, so we have to draw this right-angled triangle. Remember, great slope is, is equal to change in y over change in x. So change in y is equal to this from here up to here. Then change in x will be from here up to here. So when I'm moving from a to p, the change in y will be y minus c. And change in x will be x minus 0. And the gradient is given by changing y over changing x. So shall come and substitute for changing y over changing x. Therefore, when I cross multiply, I come up with that. Rearrange, I'll come up with this. So this is the general Cartesian equation of a straight line. Where m is the gradient, we already saw that. And c is the y-intercept, as you can see it here. So that's a general Cartesian equation of a straight line and all straight lines have the equation which can be written in this form where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. You've already seen that. Now what is the y-intercept? Y-intercept is the point at which the line cuts the y-axis as we saw in the previous illustration. And it is obtained by substituting x equal to 0. I think you remember that the x-coordinate was 0. Therefore if I have y equal to mx plus c where there is x I'll put there 0 and I'll come up with y equal to c. So that is how they get the y-intercept. What about the x-intercept? x-intercept is the reverse. So it is the point at which the line casts the x-axis and is obtained by substituting y equal to 0 in the equation of a line. So in y equal to mx plus c where there is y, you shall put there 0 and make x the subject. So this is the x-intercept. So with that we shall go through some of the questions. Question 1 says, find the equation of the straight line which passes through the point this and has a gradient that. So we shall start by quoting the general equation of a straight line which is y equal to mx plus c. Then we shall substitute for the gradient and for this coordinate. This coordinate means the y coordinate is negative 6 and x coordinate is negative 1. So when I make c the subject, I'll come up with the y intercept as negative 1. 1. Then from there I'll come and repress and write the 
equation with m and c replaced so a cartesian equation must have will have y and x or one of them so basically that is the equation they wanted then question 2 says find the equation of the line whose gradient is negative a half and passes through the point negative 4 5 So we shall start by quoting the general equation of a straight line, which is y equal to mx plus c. Then substitute for the y coordinate and for the x coordinate. Then for the gradient. Then make c the subject, c will be equal to 2. Therefore, come and rewrite the required equation as y equal to negative a half x plus 2. So substitute for m and for c, that will be the equation of the straight line. So now we shall go to gradient of a line joining two points. So the gradient M of the line joining two points A which is X1, Y1 and B which is X2, Y2 is the ratio, this is ratio, ratio of the change in Y coordinates which is delta Y to change in x coordinates which is delta x in going from a to b or from b to a so let's do some illustration here so that the axis then we shall draw a straight line then put two points a and point b so we shall complete our right angle triangle enclosing the two points then from there we can be able to get our change in y which will be that and also changing x which will be that now when going from a to b from a to b changing y will be y2 minus y1 and changing x will be x2 minus x1 therefore gradient will be equal to changing y over changing x where changing y is that and changing x is that and basically that's why how they get the gradient of a line joining two points, given two points. Also, you can get it the gradient in moving from B to A. And in that case, changing Y will be Y1 minus Y2, and changing X will be X2 minus X1 minus X2. Therefore, gradient will be this. So both will give the same answer. So now let's go through some of the questions. Question 1 says, find the gradient of a straight line joining the points this and that. So in that case, x1 is this first point, y1 and x2, y2 is that. Therefore, gradient will be given by y2 minus y1, which will be 9 minus 5, over x2 minus x1, which will be 5 minus 3, and when you calculate that, it gives you 2 as the gradient. Then question 2 says, find the gradient of the straight line joining points, negative 1, negative 1, and 7, negative 1, negative 7. So in that case, x1, y1 is this, and x2, y2 is that. Therefore, gradient will be changing y over changing x. Therefore, y2 minus y1 is that, and x2 minus x1 is that. Therefore, when you use the calculator, the whole of this will give you negative 3 over 4. That was question 2. Now, we shall go to question 3, which came from your neighbor. 2003, paper 1, question 7, and says, The points A, which is 2, 1, P which is alpha beta and point B which is 1 2 lie on the same plane. PA miss the x axis at point H0 and PB miss the y axis at point 0K. Find H and K in terms of alpha and beta. So there we shall need an illustration to ease our calculation. So we have the x the axis then we shall put points P A and we shall be able to get that line PA which can miss the x-axis at point 0H which is that then we also have point PB so we shall put B and draw a line PB which miss the y-axis at point 0K which is that therefore we know that a straight line has a constant gradient what does that mean? it means that gradient of P2 is equal to the gradient of H2 because these are points on a straight line. 
So when I use P2, the gradient will be changing y by changing x, which is this. And when I use H2, the gradient will be changing y by changing x, which is that. They will be equal because this is, they are points on a straight line. So when I cross multiply and rearrange my aim is to make H the subject. So I'll collect like terms, put H on one side, then factorize, come up with this, then make H the subject to come up with that. So basically that's what they wanted for the value of H. But they also wanted the value of K. So for K we shall use line R B P. So similarly, gradient PR is equal to gradient BR. Therefore, PR change in y over change in x is that, and BR change in y over change in x is that. Then cross multiply, and our aim is to make K the subject. So collect like terms, then factorize, and make K the subject. So basically, that is what they wanted. Now we shall go to equation of a line passing through point through two points. We have seen gradient of a line passing through two points. Now we shall go to equation of a line passing through two points. So this is still all level work, but you still have to go through it because it's on syllabus. So still we shall consider a line passing through points A which is x1, y1 and B which is x2, y2 and suppose point a variable point P which is x, y is any other point on the line as shown so this point is a variable point so shall illustrate with a diagram so shall draw the axis then shall draw the line then put the points a point b and point p then shall we have to complete the slopes this is the slope for these points and this is the slope for points a p so those are point on, points on a straight line, so we shall see that gradient AP is equal to gradient AB. So AP is from here up to here, then gradient AB is from here up to here. Therefore, you know the formula changing Y over changing X, and also here changing Y over changing X, to give you that. Or, if you know, already know the gradient of the straight line, you can use one point, so we shall use point A. I'll come up with changing Y over changing X. So I'm going to use A and P, which is this then equal to the given gradient. So those are the two ways you can get the equation of a line passing through two points. So after that, the next thing to do is to make y the subject. So m is a gradient of the straight line ABP. Now shall go through these questions. Question 1 says, find the equation of the straight line that passes through points 0, 4 and 310. So we shall go through the same steps. We we'll consider a point, a variable point P, which is XY. That is why you see here uh, XY. So when I use point B, point P, and this point 0, 04, changing Y will be this, and changing X will be this. Then this uh, this side, I use the given points. I'll use this and this. So changing Y will be this, and changing X will be that. Therefore, my aim is to like I told you, the aim is to make y the subject. So I'll simplify, then cross multiply, and make y the subject, and that will be the equation of the straight line which is required. Question 2 says, find the equation of the straight line that passes through points 1, negative 2, and negative 1, 4. So still we shall consider the variable point x, y. So changing that, changing y using a point x, y, and this point 1, negative 2, changing y will be this, and changing x will be that. Then using these two given points, changing y will be this and changing x will be that. That will simplify, cross multiply and make y the subject. And that will be the equation of the straight line which is required. Then question 3 came from your neb 2010 paper 1 question 2 and says the points A and B lie on the positive sides of the x of the x-axis and y-axis respectively. That means that A is on the x-axis and B is on the y-axis. If the length of AB is 5 units and the angle OAB is theta, where O is the origin, find the equation of the line AB. Leave the theta in your answer. So there we shall need an illustration. So those are the axes. 
Don't you draw the line with 5 units and this angle OAB is theta. Therefore, from soccer tower, I think you remember soccer tower and O level because this is a right angle triangle, cos theta will be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is OA and hypotenuse is 5. Therefore, when I make OA the subject, OA will be equal to 5 cos theta, implying that the coordinate will be 5 cos theta 0, this coordinate of A. Then similarly, sine theta will be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is OB over 5. When I make OB the subject, it will be 5 sine theta, meaning that coordinate of B will be 0, 5 sine theta. Now that I have, now here, I now have two points therefore I can get the equation of the straight line passing through those two points. So I'll still consider the same procedure. Consider take a variable point xy. So that point xy with this point A, the change in y will be this and change in x will be this. Then using the given points, these points A B, the change in y will be this and change in x will be that. So next is to cross multiply and make y the subject. So when I cross multiply, I'll come up with that, expand, I'll come up with that, then make y the subject by divide th dividing through by negative 5 cos theta, I'll come up with that. So this and this gives you tan here, this cancels, that's why you remain with sine theta, and 25 over this gives you, pos gives you 5. Now here there was a minus, but now it is plus because of this negative, so negative and negative gives you positive. Then your sine over cos is tan, and this 5 over 5 is 1, but there's a negative here because of this negative. Then here now we are left with y because this cancels and this cancels. And basically that is what they wanted because they told us to leave theta in our answer. Now we shall go to distance between two points. This is also still all over work. So the distance between two points, a, x1, y1, and b, x2, y2 is given by this formula. It comes from Pythagoras theory. So change in x squared or plus change in y squared, everything under square root. That is what you should remember. So with that, we shall go through these questions. Question 1 says, find the length of the line joining the points this and that. So you come and that x1, y, the first point is that, second point is that, therefore, the length will be changing x plus squared plus changing y squared. So changing x squared is this and changing y squared is that. Everything under square root. So when I use a calculator, the whole of this will give me 5 units. Then question 2 says, a straight line this cuts the x-axis at point A and the y-axis at point B. Find the length of AB. So cast the x-axis means that that is the x-intercept and cast the y-axis that is the y-intercept. I think you remember how we get the x and y-intercept. So at the x-axis, y is 0, so I'll come and substitute for 0 in that equation and make x the subject. So that is the x-intercept. Therefore, point A is 3, 0. Then at the y-axis, x is equal to 0, so I'll come and substitute for x and make y the subject. Therefore, point B is 0, 4. Now that I have two points, I can easily get the distance between those two points. So the length will be changing y, changing x squared plus changing y squared, everything under square root. And when you use a calculator, you'll come up with 5 units. So that was distance between two points. Next is midpoint of a line joining two points. So the x and y coordinates of the midpoint of a line joining two points is the average of their x and y coordinates. So not this word average. Therefore, if I have two points A, which is x1, y1, and B, which is x2, y2, the midpoint of these two points is the average of the x coordinates, which is that, and average of the y coordinates, which is that. And that will be the answer. So we shall go through these questions. Question 1 says, find the coordinates of the midpoint of the straight line joining the points 3, 4, and 7, 10. So we shall come and get their average. So average of the x coordinates is that, and average of the y coordinates is that. 
So when I use the calculator, this gives you 5 and this gives you 7 and this will be the required coordinate of the midpoint. Then question 2 says, calculate the coordinates of the midpoint of the pair of points this and that. So still we shall get the average. So midpoint will be the average of the x coordinate and average of the y coordinate which gives you 1 6 as the required coordinate. So now we shall go to intersection of lines and curves. Any point on a line or a curve has coordinates which will satisfy the equation of that line or curve. In order to find the point in which the two lines or two curves or a line and a curve intersect, we have to find the point with coordinates which satisfy both equations. So here we talk about intersection of either two curves or two lines or a line and a curve. Now this point is the equivalent to from the algebraic point of view to solving simultaneous equations. So the good thing in algebra we already covered simultaneous equations. So that is the method we employ in this part of the topic. So you go through the questions. Question 1 says find the coordinates of the point of intersection of lines this and that. So now in this question, it's as if they want you to solve them simultaneously. So we shall use any of the methods, either elimination method or substitution method. So we shall call this one equation 1 and this one equation 2. And if I use elimination method, I'll add both equations to come up with that. So in this case, this will be eliminated and this plus this gives you 4x and this gives you 4. Therefore, make x the subject, x will be 1. Now that I've got x equal to 1, I can, I'll come in equation 1 and substitute for x, then make y the subject. y will be equal to 1. Therefore, the point of intersection is 1, 1. And that's what they wanted. Then question 2 says, find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the curves, this and that. So there you can use either elimination or substitution but in this case substitution is easier so substitution it means that where there is y i'll come and bring this y and put it here to come up with this line at the point of intersection then i'll sim collect like terms to come up with that quadratic then solve it either using factorization or bulldozer though bulldozer is easier so by bulldozer method i'll come up with these two values x equal to a third and x equal to negative 2. Therefore, using one of the curves, I can either use this or this. So when I use this one, it implies that when x is equal to 1 over 3, y will be equal to 1 over 9. And when x is equal to negative 2, y will be 11. That means that the points of intersection are this and this. So intersection of two curves, that will be the points of intersection. Then question 3 says, find the coordinates of the points of intersection of the curve this and the line that. So still I will use substitution method. So where there is y here, I will come and put there this value of y to come up with this line. Then when I call it like terms, I will get a quadratic and solve it using either bulldozer or factorization method. I will come up with x equal to 5 and x equal to 1. Therefore, using this line, when x is equal to 5, y will be that, and when x is equal to 1, y will be 1. Therefore, the coordinates of the point of intersection will be 5, 9, and 1, 1, and that's what they wanted. So now we shall go to ne the next part. So previous, what we have been doing previously has been all level work, now we shall go to a level work. So we shall start with angle between two straight lines. So though it was all level work, we still need it in A level because it can be set. So don't ignore it. So angle between two straight lines. Here we shall consider two lines, y equal to m1, x plus c1. So one with the gradient m1, another one with the gradient m2. And suppose that they make angles theta1 and theta2 respectively with a positive x axis as shown below. So we shall need an illustration. So we shall draw the axes, then we shall draw the lines, one of the line will be that with the gradient m1 and the angle is theta1, the another one will be gradient m2 with angle theta2. 
So the angle between the two which they want is this angle theta. So it implies that m1 is equal to tan theta 1. Why? Because remember, the gradient is changing y over changing x. And this change in y is the oppos opposite. And changing x will be the adjacent. Therefore, opposite over adjacent, we saw it from soccer tower that is equal to tan. That is why you put here tan theta 1. Therefore, m2 respectively will be tan theta 2. Now, if theta is the acute angle between the two lines, it implies that theta is equal to theta 1 minus theta 2. Push tan on both sides, we'll come up with tan theta 1, tan theta equal to tan theta 1 minus theta 2. Then expand this one, you'll come up with tan theta 1 minus tan theta 2 over 1 plus tan theta 1 tan theta 2. I believe you remember that under trigonometrical identities. Then I'll substitute. Remember, tan theta 1 is m1 and tan theta 2 is m2. So substitute for tan theta 1 and tan theta 2. Therefore, you'll conclude that tan theta is equal to m1 minus m2 over 1 plus m1 m2. Now we are putting their magnitude sign because to, we want to ignore the negative since this is an acute angle. Now this formula, even if you have forgotten it, the good thing is available in your mathematical logbook. So if you go in your mathematical logbooks, under the part of geometry, there is this equation formula 31, which says that the acute angle between two lines with gradients m1 and m2 is given by this. So basically that is what we have also derived. So in case you have forgotten it, just go to your mathematical logbook and get it out. So now we shall go to we shall use the knowledge to go through these questions. Question one says find the tangents, find the tangent of the acute angle between the pair of lines whose equations are this and that. So we have to first get the gradients of all these two lines. So using this line, we rearrange in form of y equal to mx plus c it implies that m is a third. Then also this line Rearrange in form of a y equal to mx plus c, m will be negative 2. Now that you have got the two gradients, we shall come here and say that code the formula, but remember they want tangent, so they want this value of tan theta. Tan theta is equal to this, we saw it already. Then you substitute for m1, m2, m1, m2. Then from there, use the calculator, the whole of this will give you 7, and that's what they wanted because the question didn't want angle, it only wanted the, wanted the tangent which is that therefore you can conclude that the tangent is 7 then question 2 came from your neighbor 2016 paper 1 question 2 and says find the angle between the lines this and that so still we have to rearrange so this line here we shall rearrange in the form of y equal to mx plus c and gradient will be 2 then so this line rearrange in the form of y equal to mx plus c and gradient will be negative 11 over 2 which is negative 5.5 .5. therefore tan theta is equal to this we already saw that then we shall substitute m1 is that m2 is that m1 is that m2 is that then use the calculator the whole of this will give you zero po negative 0 0.75 then make theta the subject it will be 143.13 degrees so angles we use to decimal places then question 3 came from your neighbor 2019 paper 1 question 9b and says show that the angle theta between two lines with gradients lambda 1 and lambda 2 is given by this. Then hence find the acute angle between the lines this and that. So this is similar to the ones to the one we have derived. The only difference is that where there was m they have put their lambda. So let's go through the same procedure. We shall illustrate put the x axis, y axis then put the first line with gradient lambda 1 and angle that will be theta 1. Then second line with gradient lambda 2 and angle will be theta 2. The, the, the angle they want is theta. So if the line with gradient lambda 1 makes an angle theta 1 and that with gradient lambda 2 makes an angle theta 2, 
it implies that lambda 1 is equal to tan theta 1 already so that and lambda 2 is equal to tan theta 2 the angle theta between the two lines will be given by theta equal to theta 1 minus theta 2 then push tan on both sides expand this side to come up with that then substitute where there is tan theta 1 put there that tan theta 2 put there that and then make theta the subject and that's what they wanted so the hence part they said hence find the acute angle between the lines this and that so you still go through the same procedure we, like we have done before so for this line gradient is that and for this line gradient is that Therefore, the acute angle theta will be equal to actan lambda 1 minus lambda 2 over 1 plus lambda 1 lambda 2. So, I come and substitute for lambda 1 and lambda 2, lambda 1 and lambda 2. Simplify, this gives you that. Therefore, when I use the calculator, the whole of actan of this will give me 75 degrees and that's what they wanted. Then question 4 came from your name, 1989, paper 1, question 12, and says, find the equation of the line through the, point, through the intersection of the lines this and that, and Roman 1 passes through the point to 4, and Roman 2 makes an angle 60 with the x-axis. So let's start with Roman 1, but before we have to first get the point of intersection of these two points, meaning we have to solve simultaneously. So that is equation 1, that is equation 2, then elimination method, equation 1 mod plus 4 times equation 2 will give me that. So this cancels, I will remain with 23x and 58 equal to 0. Therefore, make x the subject will be negative 58 over 23. Now from equation 1, substitute for x and get make y the subject, y will be equal to negative 9 over 23. Therefore, the point of intersection is given is that. So that's what they wanted. So that, that's the point of intersection of these two points. So now in Roman 1, they want the equation of the line which passes through this point and this point. So using those two points, the required equation of the line will be given by changing y by changing x using the variable point and this point then you're using the given point so it will be changing y over changing x now next is to simplify and make y the subject so cross multiply expand make y the subject and that will be the required equation then Roman 2 Roman 2 the one the equation which passes through this point and makes an angle 60 degrees with the x-axis so indirectly they have given you the gradient when they give you the angle they have given you the gradient so you come here and say that using the point this and gradient so the gradient will be tan that angle we shall come up with this so changing y is this using a variable point x y and this given point over changing x equal to the gradient. So this time 60 is root 3, then cross multiply and make y the subject, and that would be the required equation. Then now shall go two parallel lines. So if two lines, one with gradient m1, another one with gradient m2, are parallel, it implies that the angle between them is 0. Therefore, from this equation, which is so earlier, we shall substitute for theta and put their tan 0 to become tan 0. So tan 0 is equal to 0 when you use a calculator. Therefore, when you cross multiply, you come up with m1 minus m2 equal to 0. That implies that m1 is equal to m2. What does that mean? It implies that parallel lines will always have the same gradients. I think we have seen it here. m1 is equal to m2. So parallel lines always have the same gradient you have to remember that so with that knowledge let's go through these questions question one says find the equation of the straight line passing through the point 
9.4 and which is parallel to the line this. So for that given line the gradient is 3. Therefore since parallel lines are the same gradient imply that this one is also the gradient and now we are going to use that gradient and this point to come up with this step I think you remember that so next is cross multiply open brackets and make y the subject and that will be the required equation of the straight line then question 2 says determine the equation of the line parallel to this which passes through this point so still we shall go through the same procedure first we are going to get the gradient of that line and then use that gradient and this point to get the required equation so the required equation will be given go from that then you shall cross multiply expand and make put y on one side so here it is up to you to choose you can either make y the subject or you just simplify it will still be the equation of a straight line then question 3 says find the equation of the straight line passing through the point this and is parallel to this line so still we shall go through the same procedure so get the gradient of for this line the gradient will be 2 therefore using 2 and this point you shall come up with this step then cross multiply open brackets and make y the subject and that will be the required equation that was parallel lines now we shall go to perpendicular lines so still if I have, if I have to lines with gradient m1 and m2 and they are perpendicular and apply the angle between them is 90 degrees so from this very formula which is so earlier where there is theta we are going to put the 90 degrees to come up with this then tan 90 is infinity meaning that it's undefined therefore for a function to be undefined the denominator must be equal to 0 because any number divided by 0 is infinity Therefore, this one is, will be equated to 0 to come up with this step. Therefore, when I rearrange, you will realize that m1 times m2 will be equal to negative 1. So, that is the condition for perpendicular lines. m1 times m2 is equal to negative 1. So, gradient of 1 is equal to the negative reciprocal of the other gradient. So, then now let's go through these questions. Question 1 says, find the equation of the straight line passing through point this and which is perpendicular to the line that so for this line the gradient is that the by these lines are perpendicular so for perpendicular lines it implies that the product is equal to negative one the become a substitute for m1 and make m2 the subject that will be the gradient of m2 now i have this gradient and i also have this point so when i use those two i'll come up with that step so it's the gradient chain y over chain x equal to this gradient which was got cross multiply expand and make rearrange so that will be the equation which they wanted then question two came from your neighbor 2015 paper one question two and says find the equation of the line through point this and perpendicular to that so when I get this question and rearrange, the gradient will be 2. Therefore, still for perpendicular lines, m1, m2 is equal to negative 1. So substitute for m1 and make m2 the subject. m2 will be equal to negative a half. Therefore, using that this point which is given and this gradient which you have got, we shall be able to come up with that step. Then you shall cross multiply, expand, and rearrange. And that will be the equation which they wanted. Then question 3 came from your neighbor 2011 paper 1 question 2 and says find the equation of the line through the point this perpendicular to the line that. So for this line the gradient will be negative a half. Therefore the gradient of the other since they are perpendicular will be m1 m2 equal to negative 1 so m1 substitute for m1 and make m2 the subject. Therefore, using this, the given point and this gradient which I've got, we shall come up with that step, then cross multiply, expand, and rearrange. And that will be the equation which they wanted. So now we shall go to shortest distance of a point from a line. So this word shortest, they can either use the word shortest or perpendicular distance of a point. So a point x naught, y naught from a line 
this. So the formula is given by this. So how is it quoted? So when you look at this equation, what they do, to get the numerator, you will substitute for x here and substitute for y coordinate here. Then what you get will be put at this numerator. What about the denominator? For the denominator, look at the coefficient of x, square it, plus the coefficient of y, square it, everything under square root. Then from there, they have put this magnitude sign. Magnitude means that what is negative becomes positive in this case. And the good thing is that this formula is also available in your mathematical logbooks. So when you get your mathematical logbooks, under the section of geometry, formula 30, it says that perpendicular distance will point this now here. For them, they have used x, h, k. But for us, we use x naught and y naught of the line so we use the same line so for them they said h because where there is x no instead of putting x not in our formula they put h and instead of putting y not they put they put k but still the formula is the same we only use x not y not to to help you easily distinguish the x coordinate and the y coordinate but the formula is the same so in case you have forgotten it use your mathematical logbook so that we shall go through some questions. Question 1 says, find the shortest distance over, over point this from the line that. So the first thing to do, this point will be x0, y0. And this line will also be rearranged to start with x, y, and z. x, y, and constant. So rearrange it brings from this side to become this. Then from there we, can, we shall come and quote our formula and substitute. So this 2 is here, and this x, where there is x, we put there the x coordinate, then minus 4 is here, then where there is y, you put the y coordinate, then plus 1, which is here. That is numerator. Denominator, get this coefficient, square it, get this coefficient, square it, everything under root. When you simplify, you'll come up with this, then this, but here, you cannot leave this side in the denominator, therefore you have to rationalize as you see in this step and come up with this. So in this case, that will be the distance. Then question 2, find the shortest distance of a point this from the line that. So still shall follow the same procedure. x not y not is that. Then rearrange that equation. It's already rearranged. So take this on this side to be, to be equal to 0. Then come and code the formula and substitute. So when I substitute, it will be 3 times 4 then plus 4 times negative 7 then minus 9 over 3 squared plus 4 squared everything under root so simplify you'll come up with that so like i told you magnitude sign means that what is negative becomes positive that's why here you got negative 5 but here the answer is positive 5 units then question 3 find the perpendicular like i told you they can either use the word shortest distance or perpendicular distance over point this from the line that so still the same procedure x not y not is that then get this equation rearrange it in the required format then cut the formula and substitute when i substitute i come up with that i believe you know how this substitution comes about then use the cash simplify to come up with that Then question 4 says, find the perpendicular distance of a point this from the line that. So same procedure, we are just getting more examples that you get well versed with the formula. So x not y not is that. Then this one is already rearranged. So you can just rearrange to start with x. Then code the formula and substitute to come up with that. Then simplify until you come up with the required answer. Then question 5 came from your NEB 2019 paper 1 question 9a and says determine the perpendicular distance of a point this from the line that. So the same procedure, x0, y0 is this. Then this one is already rearranged so we shall just code the formula and substitute. Then simplify until we get the required answer. So like I told you, you cannot leave side in the denominator, that's why you have to rationalize, then you come up with this as the answer. So now we shall go to centroid of a triangle. 
So the center of a triangle is the point of intersection of three medians of a triangle. So what is a median? A median of a triangle is the line from a vertex to the midpoint. So the line passes through the vertex and the midpoint of the opposite side. Know that word opposite side. So the centroid can be got in two ways. One, you can obtain the point of intersection of any two medians of the triangle or by getting the average of the x-coordinate and y-coordinates of the three vertices. So both methods are okay. So let's use both methods to go through this question. Question 1 says, find the centroid of the triangle with vertices this, this, and that. So let's start with the, with the method 1 for intersection of medians. So we shall get the intersection of, of any two medians. Therefore, let P, Q, and R be the midpoints of A, B, B, C, and A, C as shown below. So we shall need an illustration. We shall come and draw our triangle A, B, C with their coordinates. Then you put the midpoints P, that's the median, Q, that's the median, and R, that's the median. And this O is the center or the centroid which they want. So the midpoint of AB, we already know that's good by the average. We already know that's formula, so we shall come up with this as the midpoint of AB. Then the midpoint of BC is the average of those two points, so it will give, be given by that. So that means that we have two points, and therefore we shall get the equation of the line passing through those two points. For example, this point and this point shall get the equation of that line and also get the equation of the line passing through this point and this point using the knowledge which you have already gone through so for median cp using the variable point x y so chain in y will be that chain and chain chain y will be this and chain x will be that is equal to this i think you already know the, how that how this one comes about then simplify, then cross multiply, and make y the subject. That is equation 1. Then for median h2, we also have to get this equation. So this is equal to that. I believe you know how it comes about. Then simplify, cross multiply, expand, and then collect like terms or rearrange. So you have two equations and two unknowns. Therefore, you have to solve them simultaneously. So substituting 1 into 2, I come up with this. So where there was y, I put there this value, which is 10. And when I simplify, x will be equal to 31 over 3. Therefore, the centroid of the triangle is this, this is the x coordinate, and this is the y coordinate. Now that is method 1. Method 2 is by getting simply getting the average of the vertices. So I'll get all those three x coordinates of the vertices and divide by 3. Get the three x coordinates of y coordinates of the vertices and divide by three. This gives me this and this gives me that. And that's how and that will be your centroid. Now the funny thing is that whether you write only this or you use method one, you'll all get the same marks. So it is easier to use this, to choose this method which is a little shorter. Then question two, the centroid of a triangle whose sides are given by the equations this, this, and that. So they want you to find the centroid of the triangle whose sides have those equations. So let's try to illustrate what is given. So we have three sides. Therefore, shall, and those will be this line, there's this line, there's this line, and this line. So this one is here. This one is here, and this one is here. So you have to first get these three points, or the vertices. So at point A, it implies that we are going to solve to get the point of intersection of between these two points. So we shall substitute where there is y, put it here to come up with this line. Then open brackets, simplify, and make x the subject. So when x is equal to 15, we shall come and substitute for x here to come up with the value of y as 4. Therefore, the coordinate of a is 15, 4. 
We shall start with the same at point B. Point B, we shall get the intersection of this line and this line. The when I equate the two, I'll come up with that. Simplify and make x the subject. x will be 6. And when x is 6, it implies that I'll come here and substitute to get the value of y as 5. Therefore, b is 5. b is 6, 5. Then for point C, the intersection will be for this and this. So we have to solve them simultaneously. Therefore, we shall come here and say that At point C, this is equal to that. So while there was y here, I will replace it with y x minus 1. So open brackets, simplify and make x subject, it will be 0. Therefore, when x is equal to 0, it implies that y will be equal to negative 1. Therefore, point C is 0, negative 1. After that, we shall get the, we shall get the centroid by getting the average of all the three x coordinates and also average of the three y coordinates, which will give you 7, 8. That has been centroid over triangle. Now we shall go to circumcenter over triangle. So the circumcenter over triangle is the center of the circle which goes through points A, B, and C, which are the vertices. The circumcenter of triangle ABC lies on the perpendicular bisector of AB, BC, and AC. Note that the perpendicular bisectors of the of sides AB, BC, and AC meet AB, BC, and SC at their respective midpoints. So we shall go through the knowledge to go through this question. So question one says find the circumcenter of the triangle with vertices these ones and then find the radius of the circle which goes through the points that. So we shall try to illustrate what is given. There is point A, point B, and point C. So they told us that the circumcenter is, we, shall, we have to first get the bisectors, perpendicular bisectors. So perpendicular bisector at AB is that. Then perpendicular bisector at CHU at BC is that. And perpendicular bisector at SC is that. Therefore, this intersection is the circumcenter, and that is what they want. So, perpendicular bisector OP, this bisector OP, we have already covered. We have already covered perpendicular lines that they have. Their gradients is m1, m2 equal to negative one. So, we shall use that knowledge. So, midpoint of AB is this is the average so midpoint of this one is this average of x coordinates average of y coordinates which gives you 7 4 therefore gradient of op is equal to negative 1 over gradient of a b because these two are perpendicular so gradient reciprocal of the gradient of a b will be changing x over changing y so a b changing x will be this 9 minus 5 and changing y will be 5 minus 3 which is here but remember this negative has to be seen so when I use the calculator the whole of this will give me negative 2 as the gradient of OP therefore equation OP I have the gradient and I have a point therefore I'll come and call this statement change y over change next is equal to gradient then cross multiply and make y the subject so this is the equation of line OP Therefore, perpendicular bisector O2, I have to first get the midpoint of BC, which is that, and gives you 7, 7. Therefore, gradient of O2 is equal to this negative 1 over gradient of BC, comma substitute, changing X over changing Y to come up with positive 1. Remember, this negative has to be maintained. Therefore, the gradient equation of O2 is given by that, change Y over changing X equal to gradient. Cross multiply and make y the subject and that would be the equation 2. Now we have two equations and two unknowns so we have to solve them simultaneously. So equating the two equations I'll come up with this. Then make x the subject, x will be 6. 
then from equation 2 we already know that y is equal to x then implying that y is also equal to 6 therefore the circumcenter will be 6 6 and that's what they wanted they also wanted the radius radius is OA now OA remember the O is the circumcenter which is 6 6 and A will, was given as 5 3 therefore changing x squared over plus changing y squared everything under root you'll be able to get the, the distance which is root 10 and can be reduced as 3.1623 units and that will be the radius of the circle then question 2 says ABC is a triangle with vertices these ones find the coordinates of the circumcenter of triangle ABC so still we shall first illustrate the given information and for the, and for the same procedures of a bisector that one at at P then at CHU that's the potential bisector and at R perpendicular bisector is that and what they want is this so you go through the same procedure so perpendicular bisector OP midpoint of AB will be given by that which will be 4 0 and gradient of OP will be negative 1 over gradient of AB which will be a half therefore equation of OP will be given by this equal to that cross multiply and that will be equation 1 Then for your bisector O2, midpoint will be that. Then gradient of O2 will be negative 1 over gradient of BC, which gives you negative 7. Therefore, equation of O2 will be given by that. So cross multiply and simplify that will be equation 2. So I have two equations and two unknowns. So when I solve them, solve them spontaneously, equation 1 minus 2 times equation 2 will give me that. So this and this gives you 0, this and this gives you positive 15, and this and this gives you negative 126. Therefore, make x the subject, x will be that. Then from equation 2, I'll get a substitute for x to come up with the value of y as 2.2. Therefore, the circumcenter will be 8.4, 2.2. So now shall go to author center of a triangle so author center of a triangle is the point of intersection of the three altitudes of a triangle so what is an altitude this is a line from the vertex perpendicular to the opposite side of a triangle so it's like dropping a perpendicular from the vertex therefore question one says Find the author center of the triangle with what it says these ones. So, we shall first illustrate the given information. Okay, so when I drop a perpendicular from this point C, I'll come up with that. Then, also, when I drop a perpendicular from point A, I'll come up with that. Then when I drop a perpendicular from point B, I'll come up with that. Now for altitude CP, gradient of CP is equal to negative 1 over gradient of AB, which is which gives me negative a half. Therefore, equation of CP will be given by that. Cross multiply expand and rearrange then for altitude HU so gradient of HU will be equal to negative 1 over gradient of BC which gives me positive 3 as the gradient of HU therefore equation of HU will be given by that cross multiply open brackets and rearrange so I have two equations and two unknowns so I'll solve them simultaneously so equation 1 minus 2 times equation 2 will give me that so in the end I come up with 7x equal to 42 therefore x will be 6 so from equation 2 I'll substitute for x to come up with the value of y as 1 therefore the author center will be 6 1 
Then question 2 came from your neighbor, 1996, paper 1, question 6, and says, Find the author center or the point of intersection of the altitudes of the triangle with vertices, these ones. So you first illustrate what is given. Then when I drop a perpendicular from C, it will give me that. Drop a perpendicular from A gives you that. Draw a peninsula from B gives you that. So this intersection is what they want. So for altitude CP, for altitude CP, gradient CP is equal to negative 1 over gradient AB, which gives you positive 1. Therefore, equation CP will be given by that. Therefore, cross multiply, rearrange. That is equation 1. Then for altitude HU, gradient of HU is negative 1 over gradient of BC. So substitute to come up with positive 3. Therefore, equation HU will be given by that. Cross multiply and expand and rearrange. So we have two equations, two unknown. So sub, sub, solve them spontaneously. Equation 1 minus equation 2 will give you 2x equal to negative 2, therefore x will be negative 1. Now from equation 1, I'll substitute for x to come up with the value of y as 4. That implies that the fourth center will be negative 1, 4. Then now we shall go to area of a triangle given its vertices. So suppose a triangle has vertices, these ones a, B, and C. The area of such a triangle is got by first, first arranging the, its coordinates in order A, B, C, and A. So what you start with is what you end with. So let's do that. So that is coordinate A, then coordinates for B, then coordinates for C, and end with coordinates for A. Then from there, we're going to do something funny. What we're going to do, we shall multiply this with this to come up with this. Then multiply this with this to come up with that. Multiply this with this to come up with that. Okay, that is this side. What about this other side? Multiply this with this to come up with that. Multiply this with this to come up with that. Multiply this with this to come up with that. Okay. Now, next, we are going to add all these ones to come up with this sum and call it sum 1. Then add all these ones to come up with that sum too. Now after that, we shall come and call that the area is equal to the difference in the two sums over 2. So you can either say sum 1 minus this minus this over 2, or you can say this minus this over 2. And it's okay because there is, I think we realize there is magnitude. Magnitude means that what is negative becomes positive. So that knowledge shall go through these questions. Question 1 came from your neighbor, November 1998, paper 1, question 7, and says, Capture the area of a triangle with vertices, those ones. So you go through the same procedure. Coordinate of A is that, coordinate of B is that, coordinate of C is that, then end with coordinate of A. Then from there we shall do something funny. We shall say this times this to give you that, this times this to give you that, and this times this to give you that. Then this times this gives you that, this times this gives you that, this times this gives you that. Then from there we are going to add. The whole of this gives you this, and the whole of this gives you that. Then from there we shall quote our uh, formula that area will be this sum minus this sum over 2. Then use the calculator, we'll come up with 9.5, and that will be the required answer. Then question 2, find the area of the triangle with vertices, those ones. So... All these ones are just examples to help you get to us with the formula. So coin of A is that, coin of B is that, coin of C is that, then end with coordinate of A. Then from there, come and do something here which is a little funny. So this time this is that, this and this is that, and this is that. Then also this is that, this is that, and this is that. Then add all these ones to come up with this, then add all these ones to come up with that. Then from there, come and call that area will be difference can be this minus this over 2. So we are going negative sign, but magnitude means that what is negative becomes positive. Therefore, 
it becomes positive 7 square, square units. Then question 3, find the area of triangle with vertices, this one. So these are just examples to help you get to all of us with a formula. So this coordinate to that coordinate, followed by this, followed by this, and lastly that. Then from there we shall do something funny, and so this times this is that, this times this is that, this times this is that. Then this and this is that, this and this is that, and this and this is that. Then add all these ones to come up with this, then add all these ones to come up with that. Then from there we shall say that area is equal to this minus this over 2 to give you negative 10, but magnitude means that what is negative becomes positive, so we end up with positive 10 square units. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on Lokai. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video so that you can receive updates when the next video on Lokai has been uploaded. And also, if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp so that all benefit us a family.